know that you are encouraged already by the ministry of Mr. Rion Boyd, but we're, we have two uh, facilitators that are going to be facilitating the discussion tonight, so I just want to tell you a little bit about them. The first is Brianna Najay. She's an author. She's a poet, and I'm holding her book up here. Uh, she's also a youth suicide prevention advocate. For the past few years, she's dedicated her life toward helping youth who struggle and battle internally with their well-being. Brianna Niger battles with suicidal ideation ended at 18 years old. Once she became free, she now helps others. So now you see the connection here. And I hope you've heard even in some of the uh, 
the lyrics to the songs. God wants us to be restored. He wants us to be free. And when we live in his presence, there's freedom, liberty, and emancipation from bondage. So we can live in the fullness of joy because of his spirit. Also, we have Demetrius Norman, who was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois, Chi-Town. The middle of four children, Demetrius was the one of his siblings relied on for counsel. He attended Fisk University, where he earned his Bachelor of Music in Vocal Performance degree. In 2002, Demetrius earned a Master of Science in Management de degree from the Catholic University of America. Demetrius knew there was a calling on his life at an early age. Like most, he displayed his response, uh, delayed his response, excuse me. Finally yielding to the small, still voice inside, Demetrius accepted his call to preach. He ultimately went on to become an ordained minister under the leadership and tutelage of Pastor Willie F. Wilson, Union Temple Baptist Church. During his tenure at Union Temple, Demetrius served as worship leader, associate minister, and now liaison to Pastor Anika Wilson-Brown, pastor-elect, Union Temple Baptist Church, wherein he serves on the pastoral transition team and youth pastor and advisor. With over 20 years in both the marketplace and faith-based organizations, Demetrius considers himself to be a minstrel, orator, and servant leader. He desires to drive change in the local church through worship that is coupled with intercession fueled by those he serves. Demetrius, affectionately known as Pops, is the proud father of Inez, a current freshman at Georgia State University. With the newfound freedom of an empty nester, he's currently working on the next chapter. He's a firm believer of starting again and encourages others to embrace their new start in Christ. And that's just what it is. Whenever things are happening in our lives, that's exactly what's happening is God is starting us over into a new chapter. And now for the bio of Mr. Rion Boyd. I first have to say that I met Rion several years ago in coming to us for vocal training. And we've known each other for several years. And I've just known him to be a God-fearing man who loves the Lord with his whole heart and wants others to be helped by the things that he's come through. God has delivered him out of a number of different things. And that's what this concert is all about tonight. He's going to tell you a little more about that. So let me just give you a little bit about Rion. His full name is Ma Marion Boyd II. He is an incredibly, incredible creative and anointed man of God. During the pandemic, he's been busy writing poetry, songs, and blogs, creating products for his new business venture, you're gonna hear about that, and planning ways to reach others with the gifts God has given him. He firmly believes you have to seize every opportunity, which means you can't walk in fear. Affectionately known as Rion, passionate about encouraging, enhancing, and enriching the lives of others. His greatest joy is seeing others engage their God-given gifts and sharing them with others. So that's where we have something in common. I love doing that as well. We're, we're so gifted and, and so blessed to be here and to experience the gift of Rion Boyd. Please welcome him back to the stage. Peace and blessings, everyone. I hope that you are excited and are enjoying this as much as I am. And I'd like to ask um, Demetrius and Brianna to come, uh, come on up and join us for our panel discussion. And there is one scripture that I would like to share. And as Carlincia spoke, the Lord has delivered me, not only me, but every member of the body of Christ. And not only every member of the body of Christ, but he has made atonement for everyone in the whole wide world. Whether they accept him or not is their choice, but he has made it available to all of us. And so I, I am so glad to be able to express what God has done and encourage someone to step out and use the gifts that God has given them to encourage and enrich and enhance the lives of everyone that is around them. The scripture I'd like to share is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and I'm going to start at verse 9, and it reads, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, 
nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you and me, I'm adding that, but ye are washed, ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. And the one thing that speaks to me so loudly in this scripture is throughout that list of things, I can name so many that I can acclaim to myself and say I have participated in those things. I've, I've lived for a few, few decades now, so I can say that I've lived through a few of these things and to understand that even in spite of that, the blood of Jesus has cleansed me, it has washed me, it has sanctified me and given me a brand new start in the body of Christ so that I don't have to walk in condemnation, I don't have to walk in guilt, I don't have to walk in shame, I don't have to walk in fear because God has freed me from these things and it's such a great joy to be able to proclaim those things publicly and not just in my own individual life. And it speaks to me so loudly because of the fact that in this day and age, we hear a lot about things that people do and people are condemned for the things that they have done in the past. But God is not that way. He is not a condemning God. He is an ever-loving God. He said he has covered our sins with the blood of Jesus. He's cast them all into the sea of unforgetfulness. So in Christ, we can move forward. We can press on and we can do those things that God has called us to do. And so I want to encourage everyone that is under the sound of my voice to take a step of faith. Whatever it is that's in your heart to do for the kingdom of God, to give God glory, no matter what you've done in your past, no matter how many times the enemy tries to remind you of that thing that you did, the, the thing that you said, the thing that you didn't do, continue to remind him that the blood of Jesus has covered me, the blood of Jesus has cleansed me, and I will go forth in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. So I'm so glad to have everyone here today. Brianna is such an inspiration to me in the things that she is doing. She is very influential in, in, in the lives of the youth here at Faith City, but not only here, but also abroad. And I, I believe that she has a voice that can reach them. And as a father of four kids, 20 is my oldest, seven is the youngest, I'm concerned about the next generation and what's going on and what they're saying. And is faith on their radar? Are they thinking about the things of God? Are they developing those gifts and callings that God has placed in them so that when they become our age, they're already fully developed? And then Demetrius here is, um, is our worship leader at Faith City Church, and he has come in and, and taken us to a new level, a new dimension. He has so many skill sets and so many gifts, not just musically, but I tell you, this guy is so dynamic, and he has been such a help to me personally even when I was dealing with uh, my depression last year, he was able to connect with me and share some things personally with me that encouraged me to keep going even when I wanted to quit. And so I asked him also to, to join us tonight in a, in a discussion so that we can talk to young folk and talk to those that are listening and encourage them to do what God has called you to do. And if there isn't an outlet, create one. Isn't that what we're doing? So don't use an excuse that I can't do it, it's not time, I don't have the money, blah, 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 blah. If you have a vision, God will provide for that vision, and he will put people around you to help you bring it to pass. Can I get an amen? amen. All right, so with that, I'm going to give the floor back to Carlencia, and we're going to talk for a moment before we go into our next musical, musical set, just about some of the things that are on our hearts and, and to help build up and encourage other folk. All right, so... Um, what I will say, I, I totally agree with you, Rian, in terms of just um, we have to allow God to use what he gave us, right? There's not always going to be everything is peaches and cream that he gives us. There are going to be some sufferings. He said if we would suffer with him, that we would also enjoy his, his glory. We could share in the glory as well. So we have to know that there's going to be suffering. There's going to be trials. There are going to be tribulations. There are going to be things that happen to us that are unfair, that we see and we say, okay, God, if you're a loving God, then why would you let this happen to me? Why would you allow this? I've been through that in my own 
own life where I've questioned God. If you love me, if this is your love, I don't know if I want your love because this hurts, you know, and we have to be real with our, ourselves in that situation and not just, we know we have to know that God can handle our anger. He can handle our hurt. He can handle our offense. And we can go to him honestly because he knows it all anyway. He's an omniscient God. So he knows our hearts and it's okay because he can handle it. He can handle it when we come to him and say, this hurts and I don't think you're being fair with me. You, you don't love me if you're this way. It's not truth, but we have to get it off of our hearts. We have to get it off of our minds. When we talk to God in that way, that's how we create this intimacy that we have with him. Because again, he knows it all anyway, so you may as well just give it to him. But then allow him to speak to you to say how he wants to use it in your life. He can build upon that thing and make it such a great thing in, our, in lives of other people. And that's what this is all about, is that we're using Using what you've been through to encourage someone else because there's someone out there right now that's going through depress depression and dealing with such depth of hurt and pain or betrayal even through all this COVID-19 you know we've, we've learned this week even that the suicide rate has gone up 200 percent 200 percent because of this you know and there are things that are outliers you know that it's not just COVID itself it's it's the stress the stressors, the indicators, you know, that we're, that we're learning of. And these are things that everybody's going through. But in addition to that, some people are going through domestic violence. Some people have been sexually assaulted. Some people have lost their job on top of it or can't feed their children. All kinds of things have happened. But we have to keep our focus on the Lord because he says in his word that when we keep our eyes on him, he gives us perfect peace. It's not just ordinary peace. It's perfect in all of its ways. So just on the context of the pandemic um, that we're going through, and you hear on the news people are talking about being having COVID fatigue. Well, I think that a, a part of that is the other side that we go through where it's been so prolonged and we, we're still not able to express ourselves the way we want to. We're not able to interact with people. We're not able to touch and connect and feel the way that we're normally able to do. And one of the questions that Brianna had asked about being in this period is, has COVID distracted, drast how has COVID drastically changed life for the lives of everyone? And what are some of the solutions to help our youth deal with those issues at this time? So, um, Brianna, I want to open the floor up to you and uh, ask you, what are some of the things that you have done to cope with COVID and how do you think those things can help some young folk who are dealing with COVID at this time? Um, can you hear me? <laughs> so um, for me personally, COVID has been very challenging, right? Um, because the, the way I used to interact with youth, I can't do it the same. You know, everything is socially distanced, everything is masked, gloves. Um, then you also have parents that are uh, scared, you know, don't want their kids to, you know, catch anything. Um, but what I do is I do a lot of journaling, and I teach the youth to do the same. Now, I do not believe journaling will get you to the promised land. I'm a very big advocate about that. It can be a bridge, but you have to be willing to put in that work. It's about decision-making. So there's a young lady now who's going through the attempts and the ideations and stuff like that. I was talking to her parents and I said, based off her personality, which is certain, like kind of like mine, where we don't open up to people. And when you get someone like that, you got to find a common ground. So even with COVID, one thing I like to do is paint, right? And I, we can d discuss colors, what colors mean, just to build that bridge. It reminds me what Jesus did with the woman at the well, where he didn't start off ministering to her, he just started asking her questions about her life, right? <laughs> and through that bridge, it, you know, it opened her up because it's like, why are you talking to a Samaritan woman? So for, for a stranger to talk to a youth and just say, hey, how are you? Hey, you know, how was your day and what you're doing? It opened up that bridge for them. Um, and so that's one thing that I like to do even in COVID because you got to be very creative. And also using like social media pro uh, platforms, you know, get forth a message. Talk about hope. Um, I think the thing that's happening now, and I like that you said domestic violence, because though, you know, I feel for the women that's in, involved in domestic violence, and sometimes guys, because it happens too, <laughs> vice versa, but I feel for the kids who feel trapped. 
like there is no way out. And then I'm quarantined and I'm stuck. You know, I can't go to school. I have no way out. So now I'm stuck in my room. And one thing I like to tell parents is that if your child is always in their room, don't think that's okay. <laughs> if they're always sleeping, that is not okay. I talk to youth all the time. It is an escape, right? And so because COVID has made it so um, that there is no way for me to escape, all I'm going to do is sleep or try to kill myself or drink because kids can be very creative and find alcohol or weed, <laughs> right? They try to, you know, provide those escapes. So when I talk to youth, I talk to them that those messages that you're taking still not going to get you the promised land. If you want to be free, if you want to have peace, which is what everyone wants, then you are going to have to put in this work and say, I'm going to make a decision in my mind that I'm going to have peace. And I will be free regardless of what the situation looks like. And if you believe you can have it, then we can make those steps. Because it's steps. It's, it's, sometimes it's crawling. <laughs> but you can make those steps because at the end of the day, when I was young, I don't want to make this long, but when I was young, I didn't think I could. I thought that if my life would change, if my dynamics would change in the household, then I can be free. But at the end of the day, I cannot place my freedom based off other people's actions. I cannot do that. And so when you make up your mind, and when I talk to the youth, when you make up your mind, you can really be free and you can have freedom and while chaos is happening around you. Amen. I totally agree with that. And I was having a conversation just a few hours ago with a friend of mine that called and um, he said, you sent me a text the other day and I wanted to follow up with you about it because I told you that I would be able to call you or I would be up until a particular time, but you never called me. And so what, it, what, the, what the text said was, after he asked me how was I doing, I said, I am not okay. And I learned that from Brianna because, you know, we'll usually text people and tell them we're doing all right and we're really not. And so I'm like, okay. She said, no, if you're not okay, say I'm not okay. There's not specifically something that someone could actually say to get you out of that place, but just to be free enough to say it and see what the response is. And it, it, is, it is helpful. And I was telling him that I, I was thinking about canceling this concert. And I told him, I said, I replayed that over and over in my mind. And I remember that in a lot of things that I've always wanted to do in my life, I've always canceled it, quit, stopped, or didn't pursue it. And I said, I know that story. I know what that storyline is, and I know what it in leads to. So I determined to push through and to promote the concert. And I started on November 1st, and I started periodically sending out these texts. And it, it wasn't for you all. It was for me to tell me I'm still going to go through because if I waited for the perfect moment, if I waited for me to feel okay, if I waited for me to have high spirits and high hopes and, and aspirations and for all of those things to be perfect before I did something, I would never do anything. And I think that's the thing we, a lot of us try to wait on. We try to wait on that perfect moment, that perfect situation, that perfect scenario, and that perfect situation scenario, it never shows up. You just got to go and do what you have, what you work with, what you have, and God will bless that, and He really will, and He will strengthen and encourage you along the way. So even if even if you're having some moments, some low moments, if you're having some difficult situations, if you're going through some things that are so personal that you can't even express them, don't stop pursuing what God has called you to do, because He never said that everything would be clear for you to step into your path. He said, lo, I'm with you always, even until the ends of the earth. So even in the midst of your situation, continue to press because he is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And I just thank you for sharing that because it, it, it is so key. I, I remember dealing with a friend who, who lost a parent. And I told her, I said, the thing that you have to do every morning is get up and put your feet on the floor and get moving. You can't stop got to keep going you got it but you have to want to and that was the thing that I realized when I was going through depression is I wanted to get better it was difficult day after day some days I didn't want to get out of the bed it was difficult but I wanted to get better and it's that desire to get better that want to get better that determination to get better that starts you on that road to recovery am I right about it okay so Demetrius 
when we talk about COVID and COVID fatigue, what are some of the things that you can recommend to encourage people to, to deal with this? Because, I mean, it doesn't look like it's going to be any change anytime soon. Even though they're talking about a vaccine, we're still looking at 2021. Right, right. Um, you, so there are a couple of things, and that, that's such a, a, a loaded question. Um, um, I think I think just in general, COVID has, has done what we've naturally run away from, and that is dealing with ourselves and being with ourselves. Um, and so it's interesting in hearing, hearing the three of you talk, but the one thing that I thought that, that came to mind is actually one thing that I'm working with um, our leadership team at my home church, and that is uh, managing our triggers. Um, because you realize in the, these moments what set you off or what will cause you to react in a certain way. And it's, it's funny, I tell this story. So uh, my daughter, before she went off to school, um, her way to irritate me in our house, um, so I, I personally like to have all of our light switches going in one direction. So when I come in, I can just flip all the light switches up, the lights on, off where they need to be, so on and so on. So when she wants to irritate me, she will uh, mix up all of the light switches so I gotta go all the way to the basement and then fix it. But what, what's funny is, so folks will see that, um, and yes, OCD, you can call it what you wanna call it. Um, but I realized, so she understood that that was a trigger for me and she used that um, as a way to, to try to get me to respond in a certain way. And from a, in a bigger picture, when, when we're in COVID and we're recognizing that we're spending time with ourselves, you realize that you are responding to things that you didn't ordinarily respond to in, in varying ways because we either had social media to distract us, we had family life to distract us, we had work to distract us. And what I would say that COVID has taught us is how to really pay attention to self. Um, that there are some things that we have not yet mastered emotionally, spiritually, family-wise that we really need to take the time to master. Um, and so what it, what it has done for me personally, it has made me much more self-aware, um, not of even um, just the things that make me angry, but the things that make me anxious, the things that make me scared, the things that make me fearful, and it, it helps me to get to the why that that's happening. Um, and even what it's done with, with uh, my daughter being in college, it, is, it has helped me to navigate and to help manage her space and help to provide her with tools and resources um, to navigate through this space because it's different for all of us. So it's, it's actually, and, and, and I, I, I love what, what you were saying even in terms of it being a choice. What um, I always said that, that, that 2020 and COVID actually provided us all an opportunity to level set and it made us all equal. So whether you felt like you didn't have what you needed to have, 2020 gave you the opportunity to be as innovative as you, as you could possibly be so that you could catch up to where you thought you should be in this particular moment. And what I will say is 2021 will reveal how many of us took advantage of this time to really focus on ourselves. It's going to reveal what, what we did and the self-work or the self-work we didn't do um, to make sure that when we came out, um, that we were different, that we were better, that we were making better choices, that we were paying attention. Um, it, like this social, economical, political unrest is not happening for nothing. And it's, it's bringing to light a lot of the disparities, not only in our communities, but in our homes, um, in schools, in churches, um, our different thought processes. And, it, and if, if for me, it has taught me um, and show me that the folks that I've been standing next to may not have the same opinion and thought processes that I have. So how do I navigate that and how do I make sure that I still show up 100% authentically myself? Um, and I think going back to, to what you were saying, we have to pass that on to our kids. You know, um, when I talked to my daughter, it was funny, she, she called me um, uh, and she was like, hey, I have the option of, um, uh, of going to a party or studying. And, you know, um, what should I do? And I said, well, do you want to go to the party? She said, yeah. I said, okay. Do you need to pass the exam? I said, yeah. I said, okay. And she said, so what should I do? I said, I don't know. And she was like, what do you mean you don't know? I said, I don't know. I don't have to study, and I don't want to go to a party. So I don't know. Um, she said, why don't you just tell me what to do? I said, no. You have, to ju you have to decide. And in that moment, she got quiet, and she said, you know, it's just easier if you tell me what to do. I said, no, it's easier if you decide. What's your priority? 
And we don't have those types of conversations with our kids so much. And, it's, and it takes some growing. Um, because with, with the kids, it's so easy for us to say, this is what you need to do, this is how you need to do it. And even from parents, guardians, you have to understand that from your child's perspective, you, you go from, from leading to then directing. And then you go from directing to advising. You know, so, so even through this, I'm realizing that we, we, we have to figure out where those levels are and what those things are for our children so that we can make sure that we're not being the wrong thing to them um, at the wrong time. Um, and I think that those, like being self-aware and those things happening in this pandemic are, are going to help a lot of us and catapult us into hopefully a very prosperous 2021. Amen. You guys can automatically tell why I think this is just a phenomenal individual. So the one thing, and um, I, I learned this from Bishop Derek Greer. What are your takeaways from this moment? And, and the, when he talked about coming out and all of those kind of things. I was thinking about the butterfly and the caterpillar. So the caterpillar goes into the cocoon and it spends a moment in there. And we don't know what's going on because we can't see, but something is transpiring on the inside. And when that butterfly breaks forth, there's a whole transformation that is occurring. And that's what I see when he talks about this time. And it's not too late because the pandem pandemic isn't over. So if you've been a little bit negligent, negligent on developing yourself and developing your gifts and developing your talents and working on yourself and improving your home and improving your family, improving your finances and those kind of things. It's not too late. You can start today. So get on it because if you didn't hear that prophetic word that when, when all of this is over, what will be revealed will be all of that work that you could have been doing during this time. So just like when you put gold in the fire, all of the dross falls away and it comes out pure. This is our, our trial time. This is the fire right here. Get all of those things done so that when, when the time comes, you'll be, you'll be able to shine with pure, as pure gold. So I hope that, I hope, I hope that that encouraged you just as much as it did me. Because in this moment, I have been trying to create. And it's sometimes it's frustrating. And I've been trying to write. And sometimes I don't want to write. But it, but this is the thing. This is what we, we should be doing. And if you need to reach out to someone that can help you and to encourage you, look, if, if you're a writer, look to other writers and reach out to them and, and get them talking to you so that they can get those thoughts flowing so you can start creating and start writing. If you're a singer, get around people that sing. If you're an actor, get around people that act. So forth and so on. But the thing that we have to do is to get up and get moving and do it now. Amen. Okay. Well, the time has gotten away from us, hasn't it? And uh, I was, I really wanted to keep this to an hour. And so, um, as Carlincia talked about earlier, I wanted to introduce some of the products that I have been working on. And so, I, I come up with the name Sincerely Re. And all, all of my life, I've, I've been I've been under the tutelage of my mother who is very expressive and very creative. And so I found a way to kind of capture those and share them with the world. And as you can see, I have on a t-shirt with the word love on it and on the back it has a scripture related to that. And um, so we have a little introductory video that we're gonna play at this time. So if you could just look at the screen. So there you have it, sincerelyread.com. There are some products available there now. And as you can see, journals will be coming soon. I am a journaler, um, so I want to have some journals that have inspirational scriptures in it. I've been po uh, polling some people that are journalers to find out what kind of things inspire them. And so tune in. Journals coming soon. Calendars coming soon. There's more to come. There's more to come. There's more to come. And also, if you look on Carlincia's desk, there's a, a white mug there with the, with the word love on it. Um, there was a black one in the video. 
So for the first 25 people who decide to purchase a T-shirt, specifically the T-shirt, you'll get a free mug, coffee mug. I think about my coffee drinkers. I enjoy drinking coffee, but I can't drink coffee when I'm preparing for a concert. So I'm like, my mom was like, I know you can't wait to go to Starbucks after this concert is over. And I'm like, amen. And, so, and also there's a card there that was featured in the video. Um, so just check back periodically. You can also find Sincerely We on Instagram, and I'll be on Facebook soon. So I'm just excited to be able to share some of the things that God is doing. And if he's doing it with me, if he's speaking to me, I know he's speaking to you because he's not a respected person. So the time is now. Start building, start creating, start drafting, start writing, start singing, start doing those things that God has called you to do because he created us for a purpose, not just to sit around and do nothing. Amen. Amen. So let's get moving. And I want to thank my panelists here. Brianna, thank you so much. Um, Demetrius, thank you once again. Carlencia, I really appreciate the opportunity. And there is more to come. I've got more ideas, more things we're planning to do. We, there were some things I tried to get done this time, but we'll have to do it next time. So please continue to tune in. I'm so excited to be able to share with you. And at this time, we're going to transition, and I'm going to sing a couple more songs. And I have some members of my worship team that are here today. I'm so excited. I have a band here, Deanna, TJ, Ty Tyron, Tyron. Thank you all so much for being here. This, is, this does my heart good. It's an encouragement for me. This is for me, but I'm able to share it with you, and I so hope, I so hope that you are encouraged just as much as I am. So thank you all so much for tuning in. And at this time, um, if I can call up my worship team partners, come on up, and we'll get ready to sing.
on the cross there is blood for me for me on the hill there's a cross on the cross there is blood for me for me yes on the hill there's a cross on the cross there is blood for me
There is blood for you, blood for you to what can wash away my
so worthy. He's so worthy. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. 559. We're right on time. So I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. I trust, I believe, I hope, I pray that you have been encouraged, that you have been enriched, that you have been enhanced, that you have been strengthened by something that was said today. May it marinate in your life. May it come to you in your sleep. May it come to you when you're driving down the road. May it continue to lift you up and bring you blessings upon blessing, peace upon peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And can I say this before we start? tune out, tune off. There is more to come. So please keep checking in. Love you all. Thank you so much. God bless. Have an awesome, awesome day. Amen.